Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning. It's lovely to see you. I, um, I'm going to try and be quick, eh? Because you're running a little bit behind, and there are speakers here like Michael who can tell you stories that uh, are much more, I think, uh, inspiring than uh, a few slides from me. But I want it to be here. There's something about my particular background that in between that was some bog standard things like being an ordinary director of nursing and things like that. But I particularly in my career have chosen to, to work at the front edge of e-health and e-caring and they have been the most exciting places to be and incredibly clinical not in any way technical, but the most clinical jobs I've ever done as a director of nursing have been when I've been working either in NHS Direct or NHS Connecting for Health, which is interesting when you think I've been a director of nursing in Ambulance Trust and things like that. So um, I was thrilled to be asked to come, and my title is another reason why I'm thrilled to come. I am the Chief Nursing Officer. I am the Chief Nursing Officer. I'm very proud to be the Chief Nursing Officer, but I'm also the Director for Patients and the public and we chose my directorate's title Rona and a couple of my team are here today we chose this title because we wanted to begin to present patients the public and the health care professions as partners not as separate but as joint partners round the table in the co-production of health so I always like to put that title because it says something so our ambition in Scotland is to be world class, uh, to have a world class health and social care system. And we have been doing that, we've been creating that through improving performance. Our targets are all about driving performance. By improvement, we've got a range of improvement programmes across uh, the Scottish Health Service, the patient safety programme and um, our um, efficiency and productivity, health and social care integration, a range of improvement programmes. You need to have those things in place to get a world-class service. But the third thing, the big win, and the thing that's transformational is when you get co-production. And that means that you've got to give people a voice. The voice of the patients and the public and the staff in the co-production of world-class health and social care is, for me, the next step and the big win and where we're headed. We've put in place at Scottish Government, um, as you know, the Patient Safety Act um, and um, a Charter of Patient Rights, all of which embrace and encompass and put, actually, in law, the right for people to have a say not only in what happens to them, but in the co-production of how we do things, how we spend our money and what we do. So this is a great time for e-health and e-participation. Sorry, I didn't realise I got all those things. Social media as an agent of empowerment and transformation is not new. Um, the top end is uh, supposedly Martin Luther, but that's Martin Luther changed the whole of Europe, the whole religious tenor of Europe, by posting some rules, some challenges to Catholicism onto a board. And it's been with us for a whole way. What we've got now is it's just, it's just there. It's not an end in itself. It just means that instead of having to pin things on a board and wait for everybody to come or to get on a telephone or to do, the, we can actually facilitate broader, more rapid, efficient transmission and immediate engagement and a sense of immediacy. How does it feel for you? Now this could be, and it sounded a little bit like Michael, Michael's dinner table and mine, you know, um, and there is a lot of people that spend a lot of time, and I agree with Michael that, you know, oh it's attention, it's this, it's that. I just think get over it. Just get, we, and you will have done, but you need to say that to other people as leaders. Worrying about the merits and dangers of social media, it's as useful as debating gravity. It's here. What you've got to do is use it and use it responsibly for what it can do. And I know from my time, particularly NHS Direct, and that, as is our NHS 24, that was the truly empowering service. It put, it put the gate 
keeping of our health service in the hands of the public for the first time and the empowerment and the immediacy of that for me has never left me it's never left me and so let's get over it let's go for it why well that ant carrying a, a, a big um, a, a weight is for me the internet can do so much social media can do so much it can carry so much that paper and other methods just cannot it's democratic the, the top uh, I've got right left perception dyslexia so um, the top uh, left hand is democratic and again uh, you can probably tell the way I, f I think about things is that I think it's, it's about time that that democratic platform which means that healthcare professions patients and the public talk together and are unequal when you're on social media you don't know those things become irrelevant and I love the democracy of it and I think it will help us to get to that co-produced health and social care system that we want in Scotland. Michael's talked very eloquently about um, the bottom one, which is about how you can advance diseases, etc., through social ne networking. But the costs, you know, just to be very pragmatic, the costs of it are absolutely minuscule compared to any other form. So for me, the whys of it are, and the power, the passion, and the potential. And Michael's given some great examples, so I'll leave the top two, but just ask you to go to the bottom left hand, which was my experience only the other day. I've uh, led a piece of work for the UK Chief Nurses on uh, Learning Disability nursing, nursing called Strengthening the Commitment. And we had two practitioners, a student nurse and a um, acute liaison nurse talking to our steering group only last Friday when we, uh, when we got together talking about how we were going on with it. They had set up a, 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 a Twitter conversation with learning disabilities across the UK, of learning disability nursing across the UK. They were spending their time mediating that. People underestimate, I think, the time of mediating, actually. I think that's the thing we ought to think a little bit more about. But they spent their spare time mediating it. And you know what? They'd put in a total response to not only our strengthening learning disability nursing, across UK learning discipline this nursing's response to strengthening the commitment. Can you imagine doing that? And they'd also responded to the chief nurse in England on her piece of work around the six C's. They put a learning disability response to that, which is fabulous. And they'd done that based on a series of conversations over three weeks. Absolutely fabulous. So I have my own experience. I believe that social media is only a tool and that it's not an end in itself and that it's about changing behaviour, and that's what we've got to do. So my, my ask today is a bit like Michael's. It's like, be brave. Be brave, let's go for it. We will have to, we want to strengthen communi community participation. All the stuff that we talk about, assets, about shifting from a, a, a deficits model to an assets model. An assets model means you use the community and the resources that you've got to find the solutions rather than the services giving you a solution to the community. We've got to have he community participation. It will be essential to health and social care integration. I cannot think how we will do health and social care integration without maximizing social media and it will help us to have up-to-date approaches to things like our public partnership forums but we do need to pick up pace we do need to pick up pace and again I agree totally with my club that so in summary my challenges is to, uh, are twofold one is pace take it take action do it now the time is right uh, Laura asked you earlier to, to put your wishing line up, get your wishing line, make your pledge, you might not actually get to it, but at least you've sort of said, this is what I'm going to do, even if it's our Twitter today. Get yourself ready for health and social care integration and the Patients' Rights Act, but also, also begin that process of breaking down that barrier between us as service providers and the people that we serve. 
The other thing I would beg is that we begin to think a little bit about consistency, particularly in health and social care integration. Not that everybody should do it in the same way or have the same front end or anything like that, but you'll know as well as I do, the thing that stops you using social media is the user interface and usability. How many clicks, how easy is it, how long does it take? If I've got to work out a system to get into every different board in the health service here in Scotland and indeed every local authority and then indeed every patient association etc etc good heavens do you know the people who are a bit frightened will soon stop doing it so let's try and get a bit of consistency to make that pace and to get it uh, get it as usable as we possibly can both for us both for patients and the public that's me. I had more to say, but I wanted to get you back on track because this is your conference, not mine. My job today was just to be here to show you my commitment, to tell you how important this agenda is to me, to say that I'm not only the director for nursing, I am the director for patients and the public, and therefore you are part of my team, and so it's fabulous to be with you. I've got to rush off because I've got to get to the chief execs meeting in Edinburgh. I was going to say... I'd rather stay here, but I've just realised it's being taped. I don't mean that whoever's listening. I'm really pleased that I'm having to rush off to get to our chief executives meeting this afternoon in Edinburgh. But have a fabulous conference, and I look forward to hearing feedback from my team uh, as we come back. Thank you very much.